this thing was covered with a plastic paper rubberized coating on the and they had put a piece of sheet metal over top of it and it is rotten to the core you have daylight coming out through this whole thing and this is what i bought i bought a drop-in pan because I have to replace the majority of the whole pan. So this was just a no-brainer to go ahead and do this pan. Now, it fit in really well, even with some pieces in place and some rubber in the way. I have, I'm going to have to do a little well uh, grinding, a little hammering to get it all put in place. But basically, right out of the box, this thing fit really nice. And uh, very happy. And it covers every spot that I need to replace on this. And... Uh, that's how she comes out of the box. I mean, it was just really spot on. And I'm very happy with the fit. There is going to be a lot that I have to do to it, but there's still more work than what you think. Okay, now this is, I've already cut the big chunks out because it was thin as paper. I mean, it, that cutting wheel went through it like butter. It was not an issue. So I just got the big chunks out and half the spot welds had already rusted through. Now those bad part about it is it's so rusted you can't tell where the spot welds are so i basically had to bend it up to get so i need to get in between this with the air chisel and we're just going to peel this off one spot weld at a time and just roll it up like a roll of paper to get it out of the hole where it's at so this is 35 minutes worth of me air hammering and chiseling so i just sped this up as fast as my editor to work just to get through it but you're going to put in work for this this is going to be hard you're going to go have, have inch by inch just piece by piece cut it chisel it grind it off grind a chunk off grind another chunk off work a little bit grind a chunk off bend it out break it loose find the spot welds it's going to be work you're going to you're going to feel this one after the day Okay, so let me explain why I have two different floor plans here. So I made a mistake, and I ordered the wrong one. The first one I ordered was this one. This one is just a, this is a patch panel. Not a drop-in, but a patch panel. It's made specifically with extra meat on it. An extra meat for, this is designed, this part right here is designed if your rocker is rottened out, so you can replace part of your rocker along with one piece, just a drop-in. Because if you look at them, they're pretty close. They got the ridges, they got the ridges. This is designed to be just, you cut it up and use it as you need it. It's got the same bracing on the bottom. Okay, so they are both passenger side floor pans, but this is designed to cut up and just use as a patch panel. This is the one we're gonna use today. This is a drop-in. It's got all the bends, all the pieces. It goes up onto the lip where basically you can cut out the majority of the floor and drop this in, trace it, cut it, trim it, do what you need, and it's a full pasture side, floor side replacement. Not a patch panel, but a replacement drop-in panel. She is out. And let me get in here. All right. Now, you remember me telling you about spot welds? Well, that's a spot weld, and that's a spot weld, and here, 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 and here. All right, there's a dozen and a half. This one is spot welded really heavy because this is the main support, as you can tell, for the cab mount right here. And I just want to show you something. I've been spraying... Everybody told me you could go into this hole right here with the, with the spout with WD-40 and get it into this pocket to help take those out. Well, that thing is dry as a bone. I've been spraying this cab for about a year, about once a month for a year through that hole, trying to get the WD-40 up in there. Didn't work. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to find the pocket over there. I'm going to drill a small hole to basically spot weld up, and I'm going to... I'm going to WD-40 and PB Blaster it through the top so I can get these up because I still have to change these cab mount rubbers. Anyways, so this is your main support. This goes into the rocker, comes across, ties into the 
support piece this support piece piece goes this support piece goes all the way back to the back of the cab to the other frame mount and then this is all tied in together and squared up with the spot welds in the pan for the floorboard so like i said we're just we're going to clean all this up i gotta uh, bend this back into place i gotta clean all these spot welds up grind it clean it paint it while we're here we'll paint the top of the frame everything that's accessible right now it's going to get taken care of it's going to be get some treatment but basically that's what and here's the pile of stuff that came off of it now the majority of that was really 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 thin rusted let me show you what we got done so far we basically cut there was rotten after i pulled the rubber that back is rotting all the way down here like they normally are because water starts down there heater core floorboard here and then runs right down here just from going downhill okay so basically i just took my framer square and i stuck it in there just like this just like that and i traced it a line across the top right and so that gave me a nice line to cut a nice straight cut with. We're going to clean all of this up. There's dirt and grime and rust and corrosion and stuff everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to warn you guys, when you get into something like this, it's going to be more work than you expected. There's going to be, you're going to, once you start taking this stuff apart, you're going to find all kinds of stuff. That's the pile of junk that's come out of here so far. And there's stuff on the floor then there's grits and bit and you're gonna have to there's i got a vacuum i gotta blow all this out i gotta clean all this up and find out what's rotten and what's good but the pan is about 90 percent fitting right now i'm gonna have to make this piece which is pretty simple i'll just use that as a template on a piece of steel i got over there i'll just trace it and cut it so it'll be just the same size it'll be easy to put in zip 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 and but it just it's gonna be more work than you expected this is a big job but i gotta say the drop-in pan is the way to go for this kind of job so i'm gonna get started cleaning this up and it's saturday and i want to get this clean and i want to get some paint on this and let it dry overnight uh some good primer I don't have any weld through primer but we're going to primer this up and put some paint on it get it clean or as clean as i can get it and uh work it from there but uh so i got a little dolly in to do i still got a little dent over there but i got most of the spot welds done and i'll show you once i get finished it's late Saturday night and I got my paint on where I want to paint it. I got the frame rail with my gloss. It came out pretty good. I'm got this is my third coat of protection on the inner frame structure and inside here and inside in here. Um I did one primer sealer gray and then I have this um the good uh, my good ace hardware paint and I got two coats of it on so she's drying right now and now I know I'm gonna have to like buff this out and uh, grind spots to weld but I want to get a nice solid hardened protection on this because I'm hoping this will never see daylight again so I'm gonna do it as best I can now that way I ain't gotta deal with it later all right while we're here and we're talking about it I want to show you this for years and years and years, people were telling me to just spray WD-40 up in that hole and it'll get to that bolt. And this is the cab mount bolt for the main frame for the cab that if you just spray, take WD-40 and spray it up in that hole, it'll lubricate that and make it easier to take apart. Well, I've been spraying this cab for over a year, about once a month for over a year through that hole using a WD-40 can like this and just pushing it up in the hole. And just pushing up in the hole like that and just spraying. Well, guess what I've been spraying? The backside of that bar. 
No, the only way to really get to this is to get up in between. There's little notches on the bracket itself to try to somehow get it forced up in, in between like that. Try to get it to actual bolt. Now, what I'm actually going to do, now what I'm actually going to do on the other side is I'm going to find this pocket and I'm going to drill a hole. And I'm going to use that hole to spray the WD-40 into. And we're going to change these cab mounts while we're here doing this job. But just to let you know, those access holes have a plate in the way. But that's what the pocket looks like. It's just an encapsulated flat nut with the bolt coming through it. Now, that should actually be pretty strong. Now, if it's the only time that it, that would probably not break loose, which you're still going to have to be careful, but it would be so much simpler if there was access to lubricate that, is just to go slow, break it loose with a chater bar, work it a little bit, spray it, screw it back up in, work it a little bit, spray it, screw it back up in, and just work itself out slowly. Using the impact on this is not the job. It's a ratchet and a cheater bar and a lot of WD-40. Okay, that's about where she's going. She's got a pretty good lip. She's fitting up nice and tight on the edges. I got a little bit of a gap right there, but she's trimmed all the way down, sitting on the ledge. So... This is close enough where, here's the question. Where do I find out where the support braces are? Easy enough, we're gonna go from underneath. And we're gonna take a paint stick. We're gonna take a paint stick and we're gonna trace it from the backside and we'll drill the holes that way. So we know where all the braces are because this is basically where it's going. A Little bit of hammering here, a little pushing vice grip in there, but we're going to get a better look at it from underneath, but she's pretty much in where she's going to go. Okay, we're up underneath, and she's not all the way down flat, you can see, but she's pretty close. So I might have to do a little bit more trimmage on the back side to get that lay a little flatter, but she's flat all the way in the back, but right here... At the bend is where she's a little bit off. I might have to just sit my fat ass down in there and press it down with my knees when I'm in there tacking or welding or whatever thing. But we are close enough to be able to mark this with the paint marker of where the braces are. Both sides so that we know where we need to drill for our holes. Here we go. Now we got her traced. And I did went ahead and traced all the way around. I traced where the braces are. That's the side brace. The main brace, where that's where we're going to be drilling holes. And we're going to be drilling holes along that parameter. And I just kind of, just for my own idea of where I'm sitting at, this is where the floor pan is. This is where the floor pan is. This is extra. And... So if I wanted to, I could trim some of this off. We, we might go there. We might or we might not. But I've already done some grinding on this piece so it slips in right because it comes a little long. It was about, I'd say about 3 16 long for it to drop in. But really the fit on this is pretty spot on. And, and also I did mark this. This is that... I have a slide, a ledge, like there's a little bracket, a ledge that this is sitting on, which is perfect, you know what I mean? Because when you're talking about dropping it, big picture wise, when you're talking about dropping it in place, if you got, if you're an eighth of an inch off on the floorboard, you're never going to notice it. If you're, you know, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It needs to be nice but it doesn't have to be perfect an eighth of an inch like using existing ledges and existing brackets and existing like this is all existing we're going to use this we're going to try to get this as flat and as on it as possible but we already know that this this bend isn't exactly right so i might have to tweak that a little bit to get that in a little hammerage but 
she's going to be close and close enough is good enough. And I don't know if you noticed, but I, I marked, that's the box. That's the box. That's getting a hole in the center of it right there. Just because. Okay. So I just kind of spaced them out, marked them. That's where we're going to drill holes. There, there, there. We're going to do 10, 13, 16, about 20, 20, 21 marks. So that should be more than enough to stabilize that whole area. Along with the inserts and the bends, that's all made it to where it doesn't want to bend well. But we might have to do some tweakage. So let's drill some holes. Holes drilled and ground. All right. So we got that part done. We got some stuff up there, stuff on the sides, down here. Now, this isn't total yet. I'm just setting it back in place in the truck just to make sure that I ain't got any daylight into these holes. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm think you're thinking, okay, we painted on top of all those brackets and we can't weld on top of paint, which we're not. Here comes the paint stick again. Basically, we're just going to, since I got it tucked in there pretty tight, we're just going to take the paint stick and we're going to dob them holes. And so we, we pull this back out again and grind the spots where we're going to weld. Well, it's a new weekend, and we got the welder set up, and we got our all our tools that we're going to need for all this, grinders and buffer wheels and ear protection, eye protection. Okay, so we're about 95% ready to uh, start putting this pan in, but I got a little fixing I have to do. First thing I need to do is I got a little crazy with the cutoff wheel when I cut, started cutting this floor out, so I got to weld these up, both of those. And I don't really have to, but I'm thinking I'm going to weld those up just because. But I haven't made up my mind yet. But then we'll take, and you can see where the markings is, we'll take and grind all those spots to metal so we can get a good, but I've already figured out the pan where it bends right here for the toe board and for the flat part. It's not quite right from the factory. So I'm going to have to do some bending on it. Just a little bit, just to get it to flatten up on this bar. It flats, sits real, real nice here, but it's about a quarter of an inch off of this bar. So it's got, it's not bent exactly right. So I'll show you how we're going to bend that. But so this is the process. So it's just a little at a time. Look, I still have this piece cut out. And I have that piece cut. It is right here for this piece right here and that was off of one of the patch panels that I already had in the back so it was just an easy draw line and cut it with the cutoff wheel yeah, but so it's just a little bit of work with you need to do as much prep as you can now because it'll make the job better later well we're at the time that we're going to start welding Okay, so I've had it in, had it out, had it in, had it out a whole bunch of times. I had to put a little bit extra bend in the at the at the bend in the floorboard to get it to sit where I want to on those bars. I'm going to be using about six self tappers on this to get it where I want to, just temporarily self tapping to hold things in place because right now she's pretty close. And what I mean by pretty close is, I'll show you the gap. It's so she's pretty close up in here. You know, this is going to be my, and she's nice and tight in the tray. She's, I got to do a little bit of work in here to get this tightened up. But I had to put an extra bend into here in this level to get this down where it'll actually go onto that brace. And this one is dead on. These are all dead on. And then I'll have to like probably put a, a self tapper up towards the top to pull it in. But I'm going to start from this corner and work my way out. So it's, this is right here, pretty good where I want it to go. So we're going to put a tack here and work it a little bit, probably put a self tapper in here to suck it up 
put a self tapper up on the top to suck it up bring it around and then just work from there we're, we're gonna work from this corner out so i guess i'll set up the camera and uh this might be a speedy one i have to speed it up a whole bunch because this is going to be a lot of work this is grinding welding grinding hammering grinding this is just going to be a lot of work it's, like i said before this is not a small job this has been this is second weekend or third weekend this is the third weekend working on this so it's going to be something you take your time but if you take your time and you do it right you'll never have to do it again it's a one-time thing in right there and yeah it sucked it down good so i got zip 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 I'm gonna, in here. Uh, I'm gonna have to probably come in here and step on this and put enough squish in this to make it come around but she's tight here she's good here i need to get the squish in here yep yep like I said, this is just going to be a bunch of set, hammer, set, hammer, fit, 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 fit. So, all right, first self tapper in, and that worked good. So I have, yep. Middle, middle, middle. Okay, I wanted to bring it in here and show you something. All right, now, none of this was tight on that metal when I started. Now, that one, that screw right there is just to get it down in the pocket where it would stay because it's got a little bit of flex to it. Okay, so see how this is edged up and it ain't really tight to the metal? Once you start welding, and this is all I did all the way across this, is that all of this had a gap in it right and you just all you have to do is just give it light taps it will move to where you need it to go it will flatten itself onto the surface you need it to go to now a lot of guys i mean i'm this is not body work this is just putting metal in place but this is fitting as at, at its finest and that had a huge gap in it i could see the floor through it when i started okay and you just you get it to where it's you get it to where it's where you want it to be and then you put a tack and then you move to the next one you do the same thing you tap it where you want it to go you put a tack you tap it where you want it to go you put a tack you tap it where you want to go you put a tack that's how this works like i said i started from that corner and i'm working myself out so don't be scared if you have some small gaps because you can work it with a hammer and time and patience and you can get it where it needs to go. Like I said, I can see daylight and floorboard in the floor through that gap when I started. And here we are right now. So don't be scared if it doesn't fit perfect like a puzzle. You can make it go where you need it to go. Okay, I'll give you an update. I got all that stitched in all the way to the top. I've got this one pretty much 80% stitched in. I gotta fill in some gaps. But I'm here to this piece that was rotten out and I've 
trim my piece up and I got the gap itch exactly where I want it using my little magnet just hold it in place and again this will be one of those reeds we're just going to dob it move here flush it dob it flush it dob it flush it and just work our way and I'm going to I'm going to weld it inside that track because I ain't worried about that track because that's where the rubber for the door seal goes so that'll be hidden so I want to make sure that this area looks the best all right that it turns out the best I'm gonna to have to do a little work here with a hammer and I'm probably gonna to have to use just cut a sliver and get it in there and just use my little magnet here tack it in place and just fill in there but we're all we're getting pretty close I gotta still gotta stitch it uh, the whole top up there and stitch around this corner but other than that she's in all the uh, spot welds are done and then it'll just be a matter of grinding it down knocking the tops off of it and um, seam sealing it from top and bottom okay we got her tacked in and this turned out better than I thought it was going to actually ain't gonna have to do much dobbage to fill that gap in I can have too much stuff now. This, I'm running this a little hot right now. I almost burnt through on this one. But this piece and that piece is the same gauge. It's like an 18 gauge or 16 gauge, whatever it is. But when you're welding gaps, you got to be a little careful. When you're welding gaps, you got to be a little careful. When you're welding, sitting, laying on top of ungapped, that one you can burn in real hot and you ain't going to have any problems and they're going to burn through. Uh, but when you just remember, just turn your welder down just a tick because we're going to be welding this up and then welding down here in the in the frame. But that turned out, but that turned out really much better than I thought it was going to. I started here and I worked this way, like I said I was going to. So I got this flush and I tacked it. Then I got this flush and I tacked it. Flushed and tacked it. And I used the old bad Chad, you know, leaned on it and tacked it and leaned on it and tacked it and between a combination of it and my little magnet getting the edges right she's she's really good that's going to grind up real nice and if you're not looking for it you're not going to see it so that's that part so we're going to do some more tackage down here we're going to do some more tackage down here in that frame and then we're going to do some more tackage up around in here and then that will be pretty much all that's going to be left is grinding. Well, there she is. That's 95% done. I've been knocked down the welds, clean this up a little bit, wipe everything down, clean that up a little bit. And she's pretty much done. Now, this was a job, guys. This was four days. Four days, three weekends, and four days of getting this right. Now, it's time-consuming, and it's tedious, and it's a little at a time, but once you get done, you'll never have to do it again. It's well worth the time and trouble to do it right. I probably took that pan in and out two dozen times, grinding, fitting, hammering, bending, getting it right, marking it, drilling it getting it set it's a job okay it just is a job but if you go slow and you take your time it can very easily be done all right so if you're still here like share and subscribe smash that like button hit that bell tell your friends everything involved y'all have a good day because a good day today or four days later could be a new floor pan tomorrow Okay, whatever. I'm tired. Y'all be good.